seems so that we found a street, art street. And we are not even in the center. We are just walking now through a street which is full of art. Left, right, not bad. To go out in Ipo nowadays is also a little bit difficult. You always have to plan about the rain, which is mostly coming in the afternoon. And just wait for your moment when to go out. We are now here out around quarter to seven now in the late afternoon or early evening, how you put it ever. And just wandering around the streets. Enjoying art. We enjoy art. We yeah, enjoy it. I know. Yeah. And the summer we just left and here's art, right? No. <laughs> but I knew about it. You? Really? <laughs> Me too. Of course. Yeah. very close to Ipo center around 10 minutes around 10 minutes car drive out and we just arrived here it is around nine o'clock in the morning when this temple is supposed to open and well as you maybe can hear when we both are standing now Oh. <laughs> this guy is watching me. <laughs> but so much more they are not really doing. Hanging around, watching and waiting for the food. Anyway. This cave is, uh, compared to the other cave where we were relatively small, at least this which I saw until now. You are just going in through a small tunnel and then you're coming out here at this quiet, peaceful place. Not so big, but really interesting with a big temple. Uh, in a way almost carved into the stone. Ah. We are here on the Samputong temple. It is also called the Free Buddha's temple. It is the biggest cave temple and the oldest here in Malaysia. It was discovered in um, 1890 by the Chinese monk who was just wandering around here and he found this cave and he decided to stay here to meditate and he remained here until the rest of his life. And there's also many monks and nuns, Buddhist, because it's a Buddhist temple. So there's many of them who also decided to follow his path. In 1950, they decided to build a Buddhist temple here inside. And there is a lot of like Buddhist statue and uh, here inside, uh, when you go through this cave, then you're just going into this really beautiful garden. It used to be very beautiful. But right now it's a little bit neglected and there is this uh, turtle pond and there's a lot of turtles but this water there is really dirty and I don't know if this is the conditions <laughs> which turtles are living in but there's a lot of these turtles you can also feed them here I don't know if we're gonna do this it's supposed to bring you a good karma so maybe we should do this <laughs> and there behind us this really beautiful amazing building which is built it in this limestones. This is a Buddhist crematorium, actually, I think, if I'm not wrong. And we are alone here. They just opened at nine. We were here three to nine. And we are completely alone here. It is so quiet and so peaceful here. You can just hear the birds singing around you. And it is so impressive also the surrounding. There's again these limestones and the plants are growing on them, the trees and the different plants and it is so beautiful here
So we are going to feed the turtles. We have to work on our good karma. I have always good karma. I think they don't like tomatoes. I think they are picky. Yeah, people were feeding them. We had to, we had to buy a bowl of tomatoes for four ringgits. And we wanted to feed them, but somebody did it and they are not eating it. Maybe they are bored of it. Maybe. We are in search of street art in Ipoh. The city, the old town especially, it's full of it. Sometimes you walk the streets and you don't even realize that you are passing some murals along the way because all the hidden small streets are full of them and it is so cool. These uh, paintings on the walls, they are from different artists. In the back streets in Ipoh, they are mostly from the local artists. The most famous of the murals were painted by Ernest Zacharewicz from Lithuania. In 2014, he got a um, job from the city and he painted eight of the murals here. I think three of them are already disappeared. The most famous, the most known of his art that's just behind us, it's called Triksha and he painted also Hummingbird, which is also really, this is my favorite one, but it's unfortunately closed now. You can see it through the fence. Only and many of the street artists, these murals which he painted is already falling apart. It's yeah, but what he said also because he painted one of the pictures, it was called The Girl, and the owner of the building on which this mural was painted, he just painted it over. And Zacharevich said that is the beauty of the street art, it is never forever, and that's why uh, he was not protesting that this mural will be painted over. They are saying he is also the Malaysian Banksy um, because this art which he is making, this technique also, it is very similar to this uh, technique which Banksy is using. The differences are that Banksy is more polit political motivated and here that is more like a, he got this task, he got this job from the city and then he was painting. Zaharevich, he was painting altogether eight and three of these murals, they were connected to a coffee in a way because this chain, Old Town White Coffee, they um, gave him the job also to paint pictures about coffee related art. They uh, sponsored him to make these three pieces of art but also people are thinking he just painted it because Malay people love coffee. So I'm not pretty sure about that. In 2014, when he finished his uh, job, uh, the local artists, they also started to paint uh, all around the city. There is street art which you can find from the local artists. And sometimes you just even pass the, on the street the, the, the art on the wall and you don't even realize it because it's just full of it. And it's just really interesting and really beautiful. Some of the paintings are really impressive. And uh, now we are in the market line here in Old Town of Ipoh and we are just wandering a little around and see how the city is looking like. And maybe today we get the chance to see the concubine line which is very famous here because in the evening there's no chance you can go in there. Yes. <laughs> We're in a way lucky that we came in the morning here because it's still empty. If you come in the afternoon or evening here you cannot even move or going through the small street because it's packed full of tourists. Packed. <laughs> I don't know where the joy in this is. I enjoy this here in the morning just to walk through and feel the atmosphere. Nice. So here in this uh, street there are a lot of stalls which are for example selling snacks or the souvenirs for the tourists. It is in a kind of prepared for the tourists which are coming. 
So there are two theories about the street why is it called concubine line. One which says that the rich uh, local businessman Yao Ten Shin he gave uh, the house on the street to his mistress, and there's also an Ipo um, wife. <laughs> street and that was uh, where they, he gave a house to his wife <laughs> and they supposed to be very far away from each other. The second theory is that the British colonial administrators were keeping their mistresses on this line and nobody knows which one is right. So this line here was in 2015 not even really known as an attraction. In 2016, Lonely Planet was writing about this Ipoh is a nice destination in Malaysia. From this moment, actually, this line became what the line is today, such a tourist attraction. As much as Lonely Planet was good in the beginning, as much as it's breaking now, because yeah. uh, such a small treasures yeah, in the city, which is yeah. really nice uh, street. We came here in the evening and it was fully packed with the people, you couldn't even go in. So uh, this we experience very often already. Yeah, that, uh, From the moment when Lonely Planet is right, something. something, it is becoming overpriced and yeah. overcrowded. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a pomelo drink, pomelo with honey and a par, par with honey, no, or par maybe, it's really sweet. Yeah. This one is better, it's yeah. a little bit citrusy flavor. But I think this has no sugar. Maybe, maybe this part is so sweet. But, because we didn't have breakfast yet, we bought us a box of treats. Sweet. From Lam Fong shop. They are these famous uh, cookies or uh, buns with um, some filling in it here in Ipoh. And we've got two with uh, chicken egg yolk. Mm. Mm. It is salty? No. It is extremely dry inside. This is some kind of a chicken grated dry out. I couldn't talk. Can you talk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's it is a little bit like a, like some kind of pulver inside, no? And it's sweet, it tastes like 7 Eleven. Mm -hmm. I have the feeling if I start talking and we'll make like that, like a cloud. <laughs> you can really choke mm -hmm. on it because you can breathe it in no? yeah. when you are eating. This is really dangerous. Can you talk? Mm -mm. <laughs> it's not good. No, it's not. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It is too dry. <laughs> I will eat it up. You have to, yeah. That is because all. I'm really hungry. Yeah. And I don't like to waste the food. But this is not good. No. The second one, it's an egg tart. Ta da! <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it is like a very thick pudding, not sweet, intensively tasting like an egg. Right there, yeah. Not good. I mean, it is eatable, but this egg flavor, it's very disturbing because you expect something completely different. Characol Kaya Puff. It is still slightly warm, that's a good sign. I'm a little bit afraid to try it. I'm sure you will not like it. Daniel will not like it because I asked him what kaya is and they said it's a coconut gem. Mm. Don't tell me that I don't like it. Mm. Looks like that inside. 
It is warm, it's very sweet. In the beginning, it tastes a little bit like a peanut butter, and then it's slightly coming very fine coconut flavor. But you might actually like it because it's not very intensive, this flavor. Mm, it's not dominant. It's again so dry. Very nice taste like a peanut. And afterwards is coming this coconut. Which is not like. Which I don't like. Why are you eating it? I have to get sure about it. Here's this peanut. This is good. And now? No. <laughs> this here is the last one which we are trying. It's a pineapple pastry. Which means I hope there is a pineapple inside. It is again heavy. It is very tiny. It's like my finger. No, <laughs> the pastry is not fluffy, it is a piece of flour. I would say that is a pineapple jam, jelly, something. What is tasting pineapple at the end. Good. This is one I like. Question is... What are you doing in Ipo when there is not so much to do anymore? <laughs> I guess you are going to a pomelo farm. Because here is one very close to the city center. Oh, how much was it? 11 kilometers around? Yeah, it is a farm where the pomelos are growing. Here, for example. And here, whoa, they are everywhere. Oh, yeah, you can watch these pomelos, how they are growing on the trees. Yeah, this farm here, they opened it around 20 years ago so that the oldest tree which is standing here on the plantation is around 50 years old already. Which makes sense, they have to be very much experienced to grow such a big fruit. It's a little bit looking like the ghosts are hanging from the trees. Very interesting. Huh. We went in the entrance and they just said, oh, go here and there, the path, it is, there are signs you just go through. In Pomelos, I, I, I'm not such a fan for now, I would eat a banana here. I don't know, is this, is this is for free? Do you think it's for free to pick one? No? I said everything already, we can go again. No, they are so uh, ripped in the newspapers, yeah? Yeah because to protect them probably from the sun or from some insects but they are also different fruits uh, growing here I saw bananas, I saw guava and I saw the small tiny limes yeah? which they always put it and they are so small they was the whole tree full of them did you miss it? I missed it, yeah mm, of course <laughs> uh, yeah, you can walk here there is a path there going through this farm yeah. And the smell is not the best because I think it's this guano laying, the sacks with this, like fertilizer, and it smells <laughs> from this yeah, guano. It, it, it smells is, and it is humid and no wind, it is yeah, making it, it even... It's not really pleasant, but... No. Yeah. Well, it's so hot. Yeah. I have to get out of the sun. We choose, of course, the best time to visit. It is 12 o'clock in the noon. I read about it that they have uh, two kinds of the, of the pomelos. They are sweet ones and the sour ones. And you can also try them. There is a shop and you can buy a different products there and also try them. So big it can be one pomelo. Oh and maybe and this one is not even ripe, I think. It is really hot. I don't know. Or maybe it is ripe already. It is bigger than your head. It's bigger. Yeah. But it's not smarter than yeah. It's the whole garden here full of the trees and there are different fruits growing here. Yeah. And there's one of, uh, I think two or three such a farms are here which you can visit. This one is kind of most popular probably. It's so cool. I want to try things here. You can go and try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you come with me. <laughs> yeah, this giant one there. Is this the biggest one which you had this season? Uh, 
This is the biggest one. Oh. This is around 4.8 kilo. 4.8 kilo. Yes. From this you can eat a couple of days. I think so. Oh. The pavello, we have two tastes. One, sweet. Yeah. The other one will be a bit sour. Sour. It's a, the color a bit yellowish. This is the sweet one. This is the sweet one. Normally the sweet one will take six months mm -hmm. to grow up. I mean the flower until we harvest six months. Mm -hmm. If this is uh, sweet and sour, we need seven months. Seven longer. months longer time. Longer time. This if we pluck in six months, it will be very sour. Mm -hmm. The skin is very bitter. Ah uh, yes, right. Mm -hmm. right. It is good. Okay. But what benefits it has? What like okay, the fruits, uh, you can be see very good. Yeah. You can be see. And then uh, some people after eating, every morning they go to the toilet. It's very easy. Good. Oh. Ah, easy to. Oh, this is really nice. Kind of power. Uh, yes, power. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's oh. very, yeah. And I heard you can also eat the skin. Actually, the skin. skin. Sometimes the skin pomelo very yeah. thick. Yeah. Try a bit. See. We can try the this is the pomelo skin. Some sweet inside. Mm. You put in the sugar, sugar and mm. oh, like a candy. Yeah. Like a candy. Mm. Chinese people, yeah. they like to buy the big pomelo yeah. to give other people as a, as a gift. gift. Yeah. Because in our Chinese works, this is a, just a look yao. Look yao the meaning is a give you the good luck. Yeah. So we are just uh, finished now with this pomelo farm. It was quite interesting. It is a really, really small farm, which is even making it worth to visit. It is a, a small family run farm. And you can buy a lot of products here also made out of those pomelos. Yeah, like a pomelo tea, like a pomelo skin, pomelo shampoo, pomelo... Basically, very everything out of pomelo yeah. made. It seems to be a power fruit. Yeah. yeah. For a different medical conditions, it can help you. It can help you go to the toilet, as Daniel's favorite topic is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, different things. We bought a couple of products there as a present. Yep. Maybe for our families. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's really loud here, but the people are so nice. People are waving to us. Even yeah. the police guy on yeah. his motorbike, he was waving to us. Oh. To greet us just really he didn't sweet. have a problem with us. He no. just with us. Yeah, we are waiting for our grab and he is not moving. We are waiting since ten minutes and he 15. said fifteen. And he Almost said he will yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and he said he will come in four minutes. It is yeah. is scandal. Maybe he has his lunch eating or he has to go to the toilet. Maybe he was eating too much pomelo. Who knows? Maybe. Pomelo skin. <laughs> Bloopers. We are in search of street. Today, 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 nobody is interested in this. We are today in the search of a street. I don't know what the meaning is to eat it with charcoal. Maybe after you ate one thing with a chicken, you will get the problems with your stomach. That's just the meaning to eat it after. Maybe. But now I got lost, I think, between all these pomelos. We are shining. We are. Shiny people. We are. There is a one thing which I know already. Yeah. The pomelo skin, it is not working against the motion sickness. No. He was not driving like... You are not getting sick in a way. Even I got a little bit sick. I need to calm down my stomach first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? You threw it on the other side. This temple is a little bit neglected. <laughs> what you there is a literally growing a mushrooms on the wall. It's on the most of this walls and the small streets in on the the pastry tastes like an old cookie which was laying for weeks <laughs> seriously it is a hard judge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 